first item on the agenda is then, yes. that is that script that you have to read. Oh, do I have to read that? Okay. Yes, please. An advisory from the Mass Department of Public Health has been issued for all non-vaccinated and full, fully vaccinated people to wear a mask in a public indoor setting in areas of substantial or high transmission. Shrewsbury, Worcester County has been categorized as a high, categorized as a high level of community transmission for over a month. Therefore, we require that all employees and visitors in all municipal buildings wear a face mask. Exemptions from the face mask requirement include those with a medical or other eligible condition. In addition, we ask all those attending the meeting to practice social distancing, leaving space between yourself and other non-related parties also attending the meeting. The board committee commission members here tonight will also be masked and practicing social distancing through their seating arrangements. When speaking, we do ask that your face mask, mask remains on. Thank you. Okay, so the first item is to review and to act to approve the minutes from our last meeting, which was June 22nd. And I need to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it was passed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next item is to review and act to approve the director's activities uh, from June, July, and August of this year. Any comments or questions? Uh, uh, Ninety-nine percent of the meetings yeah. were virtual. Wow. Yes, uh, and I. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done the calculation, mm -hmm. but a little bit, I guess. Uh, and one thing I forgot to mention in the <clears throat> report is of all the activities that I did was that I submitted the annual report for the state aid, mm -hmm. uh, the address report, and the financial aid report that's always due in uh, August, September, um, to the MBLC to show that we complied with state requirements and we are eligible to receive state aid. So that's a very important <laughs> activity that was done um, that should be included there. Uh, any questions about any of the other stuff? No other questions or comments? No, one thing, I, I had a question um, as you came up back there when you were in the You were kind of combined with the young adults and the children's departments under one? Yes. And yes. Um, I was wondering what the annual reason title was. It's the same title. She's still the young adult librarian and volunteer coordinator. Okay. It's just an internal restructuring where she will be now part of the youth services department. And we are calling it youth services now. Um, that's that was the general consensus. Um, Sanya and Annie Lee and the other children's librarians thought it instead of calling it children's and youth services, mm -hmm. just call it youth services, serving uh, everyone from birth through 18. Yeah. yeah. So her title remains the same. Yeah. It's just an organizational tree change, essentially. Yes. Yes, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the last meeting, you know, the new uh, position for the part-time reference librarian was filled. Mm -hmm. So now the adult services department has uh, a full-time reference librarian, a part-time reference librarian, an electronic resources librarian, and a technology specialist, and of course the head of adult services and assistant director. So we thought it was an appropriate time to make yeah. this internal. Yeah. Sure. Okay. okay, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And moving on, um, I'd like to ask Priya to report of programs and services offered in June, July, and August. And it sounds like very, just looking at these numbers, they're just so impressive. 
in August, 33,826 books, magazines, movies, etc., were loaned out for Cape Friends. That's a, that's a big number. Yeah, yeah, and since we opened mm -hmm. July 1st, you know, pre-pandemic mm -hmm. hours, uh, it's been steady use, use of the library and uh, circulation numbers have gone up and um, program attendance and all of that. And the summer reading program went off very well. Mm -hmm. I, I've given the numbers here. Um, 330 children registered for the program, 61 teens and 113 adults. And uh, children, the number of children's programs were 59. Uh, attendance was 2,668. Now, for the state uh, reports, they ask us to categorize programs as on-site programs, off-site programs, in-person programs, virtual programs, recorded programs, and the number of views on YouTube, number of views on Facebook, and all of that, you know, those kind of statistics. So we've started compiling statistics like that for Programs. Wow, that's a lot of yes. data to keep track of. That is, yeah. that is, yeah, huge spreadsheets, <laughs> especially for the children's librarians. Yeah. Wow. Because they do have programs, you know, on site, off site, yeah. in person, virtual. And um, do you know what the reason for all that is? Oh, because uh, since the since the pandemic started, you know, virtual programs have become a big part of library programs and services, and they want to capture that data to um, present to the federal, um, to the IMLS, Institute of Museum and Library Services, so that they can, um, you know, show how libraries have adapted to the new, um, the new normal, or <laughs> however you want to call it, uh, and how libraries are still relevant and important and offering programs and services. We are still doing virtual programs, not all programs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. most programs are still virtual. Yeah. So, yes, <laughs> it would have to be reported that way at least for the next year, I think. Priya, the summer reading program, how does, if you remember, how does it compare to the last year? Um, I don't have the exact numbers. It would definitely be less, at least 50% uh, less than previous years because, um, I mean, the children's room used to be like a carnival every day <laughs> when, when we had this, during the summer. Uh, and definitely more participation in the summer reading where kids could come in and you know, we had prizes to offer. They had logs to fill about how many books they read and mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. This time that was also virtual. They had yeah. to report uh, online, not virtual, online. Um, we still offered prizes, you know, when they read a certain number of books and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, the participation is pretty good given the circumstances, mm -hmm. but it would definitely be less than previous years. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is uh, the financial and legislative uh, outlook for the year. And Priya, do you have any concerns about where we're standing now? No. Budget-wise? No, I don't have any concerns right now. I think it's uh, we are in a good position. Um, as far as materials budget is concerned, we are at 30, 30 percent. At what yeah. percent? 30.9 percent, okay. 30 30.9, um, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, $10,000 of that was, of course, the periodical subscription, which we had suspended the previous year, um, and the rest is books and other materials. Um, Yeah, I think I think we are good for the first. I mean, we've just completed the first quarter, so it's 
good. That's good. Um, the salary for the temporary reference librarian uh, who, uh, who was hired for seven weeks before we hired the new full-time reference librarian. Um, the salary for his, uh, their, their, sa their salary was paid from the professional services line from our uh, operational budget. Um, and that amount will be moved from the salary wage line to professional services after the town meeting members vote at the special town meeting on October 18th. So that transfer will be made and then um, it should be. Right now the professional services, it, we have exceeded our uh, budget. That's because uh, the pay for this temporary reference librarian was taken from that. And that worked out well, the um, temporary workers? Yes, yeah. yes, that worked out very well. I mean, otherwise, the adult services team would have been oh. really uh, stressed out with <laughs> having to cover the reference desk. Yeah. So I good. that was good. really good. And it seemed to be very timely. I mean, they were able to fill that position pretty quickly. Yes, yes. Uh, Review and act upon the year to date report. So, is that something that we need to vote on? No, I think we just have to. We just kind of review it? Yes. Okay. And the next um, item on the agenda related to financial and legislative is project proposals for American Rescue Plan Act grant funding. Yes. Um, so, the town is eligible to receive $11.5 million as part of the American Rescue Plan Act mm -hmm. grant. Um, so the town manager asked department heads to submit project proposals with budget estimates. Um, an internal working team comprising the senior leadership will review the proposals and determine the projects to be considered for approval by the Board of Selectmen. I think the vote on that was, will probably be at the October 12th meeting. Um, so I submitted, each department could submit two proposals. and. Um, I submitted a proposal for a pop-up library. Um, so a pop-up library is basically taking the library to the community, um, making it accessible to people who can't actually come to the uh, physical library for a variety of reasons. It could be lack of transportation, accessibility restrictions, or lack of awareness of, of library services. So what I'm proposing is that we hire two contractual workers or librarians, two capable and enthusiastic librarians to spread the library's message by visiting places in the community, setting up a table there, taking a computer, scanner, um, getting library cards issued, and um, explaining about, you know, explaining all the services that the library has to offer, and maybe even provide technology help. So if you visit a place where uh, we see a need for um, help with uh, downloading e-books or uh, help accessing the digital resources, we could provide that help. So basically taking the library to the community. So that's the idea of a pop-up library. And um, I so the I yeah, it's the kind of the bookmobile we used to do. And so have, have you used the van that you normally use for outreach? Sure, the, uh, the we would have to use the van because I don't think we can ask for a <laughs> vehicle yeah. for this. <laughs> we would have to use the van, but it's so this is uh, in addition to what our outreach librarian uh, provides. Uh, you know the kind of service that she provides. So this would be more help to uh, people in the community being able to access library services. Exactly, like a fa like the farmer's market or um, going to places like Dean Park or um, the housing development or apartment complexes. It could be a variety of places mm -hmm. we could go to. So that is one proposal, and the second one is uh, a request for outdoor equipment. Now that we are offering um, 
programs in the courtyard outside the children's room. We did offer one program in the lawn and uh, at front of the library for adults. So for programs in the children's courtyard, uh, we are requesting uh, equipment such as microphones, speakers, projectors, screens. Uh, and then to make the courtyard accessible in the summer, have a uh, the sunshade for the pergola to be bigger than what it is now. It's pretty small for some reason. It doesn't cover the whole uh, area there. And in the winter, to have outdoor heaters so we could continue to offer programs, not when it's extremely cold, but um, when it's maybe late fall and stuff. So that's the proposal and an outdoor system with a projector and screen to sh uh, show movie screenings or something in the front lawn. Um, that's something we're thinking about. So that's the second proposal for outdoor equipment. Good, great. Both sound great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you know, going back, I'm, I know I'm going back a minute, but you were saying, just introducing to the community with the pop-up type mm -hmm. of libraries, I was impressed with how many new library members there are every month, 134. Right. Is that uh, 297 new library members in July? Is that more Jul than average? It, July was more than average was, okay. because we opened, you know, the library was open oh, for, for hours. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's the yeah. reason. Yeah. And September is library's uh, card sign-up month, so we've been advocating a lot, uh, Melissa and um, Deb have been going to yeah. schools and um, reaching out to teachers and librarians and uh, really pushing the Good. library Good. Card thing. Good. Yes. It was almost 700 over the summer. Yeah. So yes. it really surprised me given the population of our town. Yeah, exactly. You know, it was a lot. So. Exactly, yeah. yes. But can you, can you get a library card here if you're not a Shrewsbury resident? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so yes. maybe people who live in the surrounding close area choose to come here rather than having to say mm -hmm. drive all the way to Worcester. Or sure, many people say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even people who yeah. live in Worcester say they prefer to come to our life. Yeah, I've heard that because oh, I mean, So is it yeah. kind of how they live within the CWMR system, or is it? Oh, anyone in this, yeah, anyone in the CWMR system can get a library card. Um, there is a field in, the, um, in their records where you would say home library is Worcester or Grafton or whatever based on their address. Okay. But we, they can uh, get a Shrewsbury library. And they need to bring mail or ID? Or An ID, if, um, yeah, to prove. Oh, I was unaware of that. I, I thought that you just got the library card from the community that you resided in. But no, could you be can get what? it from any, any community. Interesting. Do we have any statistics on how many residents are now uh, If it is out of state, we have uh, the statistics, but not um, within the state. You I mean, we wouldn't state. say. You can join if you're out of state? You can get a card, if, even if you're out of state. It's, the cost is $10 oh, wow. uh, oh. per year. Yes. You learn something new every day. You do. <laughs> All right, the next item is facility equipment and grounds. Um, there's nothing new to report. Okay. How about under gifts and grants? Um, gifts and grants, uh, we have received the LSTA grant award for Civic Hub. Uh, it's a $10,000 amount for a year from October 2021 through September 2022. And uh, we are planning a number of activities and events. Um, the kickoff is going to be um, the talk by um, author Eric Kleinenberg, author of Palaces for the People. I you know, think everyone has a copy of this mm -hmm. flyer. Yeah. Palaces for the People, how social infrastructure can help fight inequality, polarization, and the decline of civic life. That's going to be on October 20th. It's a virtual program. Um, this is partially sponsored by the Shrewsbury Public Library Foundation um, and we were thinking we'd offer it at the library and uh, uh, allow for remote participation. So um, that is the plan for this event and 
the registration is online. People can register to receive uh, the Zoom invite and uh, also submit questions if they like. Is there uh, a cap on the number of attendees? Uh, right now we have opened it to 100, but if needed, we will uh, increase it to 500. And then you have um, submitted an application through for the uh, um, yes. English Conversation Circle and the Memory Cafe program. Right, that is um, to the Greater Worcester Community Foundation. Yeah. The grant is sub was submitted September 15th, and we'll know by the end of the year by if the end we of are the awarded year. the grant okay. for 2022. Okay. Okay. How did the Memory Cafe go when it was on um, when it was moved? Uh, the Memory Cafe, um, it took a little while uh, to pick up, um, you know, and um, after about three to four months of offering it virtually, we did start getting uh, good numbers uh, because it was, you know, we advertised it to elder care residences and places where people could uh, get a group of people in their meeting room or whatever and project the program on uh, their TVs, so the numbers increased to that, that way. Uh, we are planning to offer it in person starting in uh, November. We'll see how that goes. Uh, yes, uh, yes, that, that is the plan. Um, we offer two uh, meetings a month, so we're planning to do one in person and one virtual so that we can reach you know, people who want to come to the library and don't have access to technology, and also those who want to join remotely. I think it's wonderful that you've been able to keep that going through this, especially for the, um, the partners. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. It sounds like people adapted over time. Right, I think so. Yes. More Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I have a question about the LSC grant. Sorry to go back. Is that all related to the like the palaces for the people that community read, or it's just for? No, a variety, of a variety of activities. So we are planning a number of uh, programs and activities, um, um, community conversations. You know, inviting local people um, to meet and. Um, talk about civic issues and a variety of other programs. So this is just the kickoff event and it's good to have a community-wide reading, uh, you know, as part of this whole big project of making the library a civic hub. Thank you. Sure. Okay, any other questions or comments? Before we move on to personnel. Um, kind of uh, referred to this a little bit earlier for you, but maybe we can just go over more specifically um, who's new. <laughs> sure. Um, the new reference librarian started on September 16th, and uh, her name is Jessica Datry. She has experience um, working in the URI reference department while she was in grad school. And she also has experience teaching as an ESL adjunct, most recently at Northeastern University. And she's also a tutor at the International Tutoring Center. So she's uh, adapted very quickly. She's um, uh, become part of the adult services team and part of our whole team. And she and Amanda Burnett, who's our who, felt, who, was, who was the new part-time reference librarian are working very well together. So, um, very happy about that. Will she be working at all with the conversation? Because people do this conversation. Uh, not necessarily, but we could use her expertise. Exactly, we could use her expertise. Yeah, we'd let her settle in a little bit and then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this is one more thing you have to do. <laughs> now, Amanda Burnett was already here, correct? Yes. And she her had, hours were just increased. Exactly, right? yes. Uh, so she had been, she has been with the circulation team for a few years now. 
and uh, just increased her hours from 18 to 19, so she had become a benefited uh, position. Good. Uh, but then she applied for this part-time reference librarian. And um, during the pandemic, she had been doing a number of things, not just confined to you know, duties as a circulation librarian. So it just is, was perfect um, that she was hired for that position. And um, uh, she's now part of that team. I have a question about the benefits. What kind of benefits do you get 19 hours? 19 hours, you get vacations. Vacation. Otherwise, you don't get vacation hours, right? Or vacation sick days. I think you have to be 20 hours with the time. No, it is 19 hours. 19 hours. She does get health benefits and the other? Yes. Wow. So that one hour makes a big difference. Yes. Yeah. Very long. We have new five five new pages as well. Five new pages, four of them for the during the week, and one of them a dedicated Sunday Sunday page. Yeah, and the library will be open Sundays starting October third. Oh, good, great. And did you pull this because of the pages were like some volunteer, former volunteers, and even some high school students? Like, what was it a range of hires? Oh, absolutely, yes. It was a range of hires, some with experience, some high school students, um, and uh, some former volunteers. Yes. Okay. Moving on to a report um, just about the Shrewsbury Public Library Foundation. Um, so we had our uh, recent meeting on September 13th. And uh, in between the quarterly meetings, the foundation, a subcommittee of the foundation board called the steering committee has been meeting um, to discuss fundraising opportunities and uh, uh, how to reach, to reach out to the community to uh, advertise what the foundation is about and stuff. Um, at the meeting on September 13th, there was a discussion regarding promotional materials, future events, uh, the ambassador program that has been discussed before. Um, there was also a discussion about whether we should focus on large donors or to look to raise small amounts uh, with, in association with events. Uh, another discussion was with regard to unrestricted donations versus donations targeted to a particular um, target, be it certain community programs, technology, or others. Um, I plan to reach out to libraries um, that serve similar kind of populations like ours, the size and uh, demographics, and see, uh, you know, maybe get contacts from their foundation boards um, so that our foundation board members can talk to them and get some ideas on uh, how they are doing things. So that's. I've actually reached out to a few librarians, but I'll um, report to the to the board. So. Okay. And anything new from the Friends of the Library? Um, the annual board meeting is coming up, and um, I think I had a sign about that. It's actually Wednesday, this coming Yeah, Wednesday. October 6th, yeah. and it is, um, a bit after the business meeting, there will be a program by Catherine Woods. She's a presenter uh, who's going to um, present Journal Truth, and um, that's a program that people can sign up for. It's an open meeting. The business meeting will be a short one from 6.30 to 7, and then there'll be this uh, program. If you register, oh, there you go. I was looking for that. I didn't have a copy. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, again, I'm mentioning the correctly. <laughs> yeah, actor Catherine Woods will recreate the library. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah.
and looking forward to that. Yes. All right, and I guess there's a new policy to be reviewed regarding teacher card and deposit collection policy. Yes. Oh, I'll also mention the Friends book sale that's oh, coming yes, up. Oh, please. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. The annual book sale that had been postponed from last year is going to happen October 14th through October 17th. And um, patrons can expect the same book sale that they've been used to. And with a, an additional $10 bargain bag, that's the feature for this year. That's the special uh, feature for this year. And all bags will be provided, and uh, books can also be purchased individually at great prices. Grocery bags, Trader yeah. Joe's bags, yeah. Stop and Shop, and Trader Joe's, right? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a special opportunity for local educators who can fill a bag with books and media on the last day of the sale, October 17th, for free. So this is October 14th through October 17th, uh, the annual Friends Book Sale. Is there going to be a limit to how many people can come into the room? Uh, yes, we're going to have volunteers um, just keep an eye. And uh, about 20, 20 to 25 people um, in this space at, at a time, including the volunteers. That's what we're planning. Um, also, uh, the Friends uh, is participating in Stop and Shop Give Back uh, program, which is uh, the grocery bags that you can purchase oh. at Stop and Shop in Shrewsbury. And for every bag that's sold, a dollar goes to the Friends of the Library. Oh, right. Well, so go Stop and Shop. I'm sorry, it's the month of October. Okay. So, uh, so throw out all those thousand <laughs> bags <laughs> months and months. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know the friends help sponsor a uh, booth at the the um, Spirit of Shoes. Oh, that absolutely! Went, that went well. I yes, that fun. that was very successful. I think uh, we, we were very happy to see people there, and I think the community <laughs> residents <laughs> were very happy to have a have the Spirit of Shoes sure. very this year. Very well. Good. Okay, now moving on to the policy change regarding teacher card. Um, yes, so the main purpose of this revision was to include homeschooling parents, and um, so we uh, say that. Uh, so the first point, first bullet point there says teacher cards are available to educators working in private, public, and home schools in the town of Shrewsbury. So um, the words that are in red are to be replaced by the uh, words and phrases in blue. So those are the main changes. Uh, the language, you know, in some of the sentences has been redone, but the main change was to include home schools. And would we accept the modifications to the policy? Did, did somebody second it? Oh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Just as an aside, how many teacher cards are usually granted every? Is it an annual? Do you have to reapply every year? I yes, they yeah. have to reapply yeah. every year. Yeah. I don't have the numbers. I can find out and. Well, that's okay. I'm Just at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, and miscellaneous, there's, I guess, a request by an author to sell books at an author event? Yes. Um, so the author is Dr. Rachel Geller, and the book is Saving the World One Cat at a Time. One cat? Cat, cat at a time, yes. Uh, and she's planning to donate the proceeds to Willie's Kitty Angels, which is located in Melbury. And uh, this is an in-person on-site program that is being planned. Um, so she's requesting that she be allowed to uh, sell copies of her books. How would you classify this book? 
exact number for it. It is non-fiction. It is non-fiction for children, for teens. It's for adults. Oh, for adults? Yes. Okay. yes. All those cat people <laughs> aware of this program. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. A lot of us out there. Yes. <laughs> Advertise it in the library world and we'll yes. have people. Well, yes. Didn't we have a policy about selling books at Presentations. I can't remember the specifics of it. Um, that's that is the policy that the board approves it. Okay, everyone. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I move to approve um, the selling books at the library. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Would this be something just at the event? They would at sell the it and then it just, goes yeah, away. Yeah, that's right. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other business to come before the board? Um, I, I just had a question. I, I was wondering how the website is coming along, the website and branding. Oh, um, it is coming along very well. Just a few um, finishing touches have to be done. And um, the, uh, Mike, uh, James, and Ariel have reached out to the vendor who uh, provided us the uh, hosting platform to create the URL. So right now it is like prefab something, you know, it's like under construction. Mm -hmm. So they have to provide the correct domain name and um, they're working on a few finishing touches. So it should be ready to launch pretty soon. And, and isn't there going to be like a user group? Like a yes, yeah. a focus group, focus group. Yes. yes. It will first be sent to the focus group for um, their comments and reviews, and then um, will be launched to the public. Very good. Anything else? Um, I would just like to thank our Sunday sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, October 3rd is our first Sunday opening, and we have received a number of donations uh, from local businesses and um, individuals. So I would just like to read the names uh, of the donors, if I may. Uh, providing for eight Sundays is the Shrewsbury Federal Credit Union. Wow. Yes. Um, two Sundays uh, are being sponsored by Dr. Dale and Mrs. Melanie McGee. And providing for one Sunday each are Olive I and Anthony A. Bugatti Jr., Donor Advised Fund of the Greater Worcester Community Foundation, Olivia Pegg and Don Hubbard, Kathleen and David Rochello, Dr. Anne Larkin and Peter Larkin, mm -hmm. in memory of James Heedles, a donation in memory of Bucky Summers, a donation in memory of Bonnie O'Brien by her sister Betty Ann Kirby, John Collins and Nancy Hughes in memory of Dr. John P. Collins, Maureen Fujimori in honor of Eileen Mooney Evans, the Pacini family in honor of Ruth Seward, the Del Dotto grandchildren, Drea, Dylan, and Devon, Central One Federal Credit Union, Avidia Bank, the Rotary Club of Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury Garden Club, Dean Park Grill and Pizza, and uh, one anonymous donor, um, and the Friends of the Library are um, sponsoring a Sunday in honor of Dean Gillen, who oh, served on the board oh, for oh. many, many years. Yeah. He was defensive. We, we haven't yet uh, informed him, yes. Oh, it's a secret. <laughs> it's not yet. Hope he doesn't watch his shows. <laughs> Um, we have a few more openings, and um, the cost for sponsoring one Sunday is uh, $800, and if you spend, send in your sponsorship before October 1st, <laughs> the cost will be $750. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you to community members for yeah. Yes, that. thank you to everyone. Fun. Yes. I don't know if any of you remember, but we were pushing for the new library here. Peter and Peter Lockett and Ian Lockett's daughter came and spoke that night. And she was probably in 
what grade maybe? Um, um, she was a student at St. Mary's mm -hmm. State. And she talked about how she loved libraries, she loved the feel of books. She gave this fantastic little speech. And when it was over, everybody clapped. <laughs> You're not supposed to clap. <laughs> but she was like, you know, out of the mouths of babes. I mean, how could you not go along with supporting it after all she said? She just said, she said I'd love to open and feel a new book. <laughs> now she's a freshman at Leslie. Aww. Aww. That's wonderful. Okay, anything else for people to, that people are, want to talk about or? I just noticed that the next meeting is should be October 26th. Oh, 26th? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Which is the fourth Tuesday of the month. Yeah, I got thrown off this month because it's the fourth Tuesday. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to see everybody again in person. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so see you October 26th.